Section 7.2 is devoted to exponential models because, of course, exponential models have so much mathematical importance. Now, that said, there's not a ton of calculus in here, so we just begin with a review of exponential growth that we should know from algebra. Suppose you have placed Y0 dollars in an investment account that yields 7% growth annually. What are two functions that could be used to represent the amount of money in the account after two years? All right, so let's think about this. When time is zero, and then let me put the money right here. All right, so at time zero, we have Y0. That's our initial value. All right, now at time one, we would take Y0 and we would multiply it well, let me put it this way. You take y0 plus another 0 0.07 times y0. Hmm. Okay, well, this is 1y0 and this is 0.07y0, which means you have y0 times 1 plus 0 0.07. In other words, it's 1.07 times y0. That's usually the way we mathematically write it. All right. Now, for the next year... Uh, year two, it'd be the same thing. It'd be, well, let me put it this way. Y0 times 1.07, so 1.07 Y0 for what we had before. But again, we would multiply that by 1.07. Or if you like, it's 1.07 Y0 plus another 0 0.07 times 1.07 Y0. Right? Same idea. So you have what you had before and then another 0 0.07 on top of that. Oops, except I wrote on my 0 0.07. All right, so then I could do the same thing I did before. I could factor out this time 1.07y0 factors out. And then I'm left with, there's a 1 here, plus 0 0.07. In other words, it's 1.07 squared. times y0. Interesting. All right, so we've learned that if we have t years here, right, because they want to know um, two functions that would represent the account, amount of money in the account at t years. So that would be y0 times 1.07 to the t. I just reversed the order. <laughs> so if you want to put 1.07 to the t times y0, that's fine too. Right. Now they want two equations. That's because we can mathematically manipulate this particular equation that we have into another one. <laughs> so I'll just say manipulate it because there's another one, which would be y0 e to the kt. And k would vary depending on what we have here. So we would want um, where e to the k is equal to 1.07, right? Because this value right here has to be e to the k. Okay, so this one on the left is often what algebra classes use until they get to this one, <laughs> right? So this is y equals y0 e to the kt, and that's what we're going to use down here. So it's y0 e to the kt. Because it uses Euler's number, it's a little bit more um, important for us. All right, y0 is called the initial value. And if you're thinking, I've seen all this before, yes, you have. This is um, most likely review, and that's fine. Um, now, if you're looking at y0 e to the kt, for exponential growth, k will be greater than 0. It'll be positive. For an exponential decay, k will be less than 0. Right? And I can prove that over in decimals. Let me show you. So if k is positive, you can see that's exponential growth. If I move k over to the negative side, you can see right there, that's exponential decay. All right, and then um, the derivative dy dt is called the absolute growth rate. Right? So, because of course the derivative is the rate of change. Now, 
Now, if I take that derivative and I divide it, so if I take that rate of change and I divide it by how large the amount in the account was in the first place, that's called the relative growth rate. And this is actually true for all functions. If you take the derivative and divide by the function, that's the relative growth rate. It's not something we you know, spend a lot of time with generally. And I'm sorry, this should have been at the bottom of this page, so I apologize. But in exponential growth, y prime of t divided by y of t, that relative growth rate is constant. Sorry, I'll fix that for next time that this is on the same page because they meant to go together. So it's constant. Um, which means that you have a constant relative growth rate. And that's what makes it exponential growth. Right? So in other words, um, exponential growth has a constant relative growth rate. doesn't have to write it again, just to let it sink in. All right, so let's do an application of this. Sorry, that should have been at the bottom of the previous page, so the application should be at the top of this page. All right, so we have a population of a town, I called it Pine, is given by P of T equals 1500 plus 125 T, while the population of Spruce, uh, obviously I was feeling very woodsy that day, is given by S of T equals uh, 1500 e to the point one t. Oh, it's the book author that was. <laughs> That's the books. All right, so where t is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so let's look at pine. Pine is this growth right here. So pine has a growth rate that is Well, it's the derivative of P, so P prime of T, right? Because this is the population. So its growth rate would, of course, be its derivative. So its derivative is 125. Okay, so then the relative growth rate, because that's what we were asked to find, sorry. The relative growth rate would be P prime divided by P which would be 125 over 1500 plus 125t. All right, now for the town of Spruce. I think one of these should be, um, oh, I'll make it pink because it's this curve right here, which is sort of pink. All right, so for Spruce, the growth rate is s prime of t, which would be 1500 e to the point 0.1 t times point 0.1 because of chain rule. Okay, so then, you know what, I'm just going to leave it like that. I know I could find it, but bear with me here. What about the relative growth rate? That would be taking s prime of t and dividing by s of t. So that would be 1500 e to the point 0.1 t times 0 0.1 over 1500 e to the point 0.1 t. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, I'm thinking these cancel and you're left with point 0.1. constant. Therefore, this is k, right? So k is 0.1 for spruce. Now, not so for pine. Pine is not growing at an exponential rate. And you can tell because its relative growth rate is not a constant. All right, so let's use that fact about spruce and let's find its um, doubling time. So the Town of Spruce will have doubled its population um, by what time? So doubling time means you want to get to double what you started with or double what you have. So that will be the doubling time. So I have 1500 
e to the 0.1t, right? That's s of t right here. And I'm going to set it equal to, and then I want to double it, right? That's what doubling time will be. So doubling time will make it equal to 3,000 because it's double. And basically, you're just going to look for the time when this happens. And I'm assuming you've all done this at some point, right? You're in calculus now, so you've probably done this in algebra class, but that's all right. Now, you notice that if I divide both sides by 1,500, because I can, I will, in fact, have 2. Okay, so then how do I get t out of the exponent? Well, there's only one way I know, and that's to take the log of both sides, right? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> All right, so the natural log of 2 equals the natural log of e to the point 1t. Now, how does that help? Because that looks worse than what I started with. And the answer is, well, because of the power property, we can bring the point 1t down in front. So we can say, hey, this is... 0.1t times the natural log of e, which of course the natural log of e is 1 anyway. So. so that means that the natural log of 2 is equal to 0.1t. Like that. All right, because this piece and this piece are left. And then we just divide by 0.1, right? Simple as that. And we'll have t equals the natural log of 2 over 0.1. And here's a trick about doubling time. It's always going to be the natural log of 2. Um, we didn't have to really do all of this work. If you've been in an algebra class where they taught you, just set it equal to 2, but then get rid of your 1500 at the start, it'll work, right? Similarly, if you want halving time, like the time it um, takes to cut it in half, if it's an exponential decay, you would set it equal to a half. That's how you can find half-life, for example. All right, so t is the natural log of 2 divided by 0.1. So let me grab Dasmos here. So natural log of 2 divided by 0.1 is 693. And this was years, right, because they were talking about time being measured in years in the original problem. And like I just said, sorry, this was supposed to be at the bottom of this page. I have a little bit of a pagination issue here, all right? So that's all there is on this page. So um, these are supposed to be get it together. So the quantity described by the function y of t equals y0 e to the kt, so a basic exponential function for k greater than zero. So this must mean we're growing, right? This means it's exponential growth. Because k is positive. If k was negative, it'd be exponential decay. So that doubling time what is what I just said. What you can do is take the natural log of 2 and think about what we ended up doing. You're dividing it by k, right? That will always get you the doubling time. So if you take the natural log of 2 and you divide it by k, that will be the doubling time. Sorry, that should just be at the bottom of that page. They should be together. And I'll fix that for future.